Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougar Pregame Live is brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Also brought to you by Quick Quack Car Wash. Fast, clean, loved everywhere. And now, here's your host, Jason Shepard. Good evening, BYU basketball fans. Welcome once again into Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Tonight, the BYU Cougars are in Santa Clara, California, for a matchup against the Santa Clara Broncos. The Cougars capped off their two-game homestand last week with a 78-65 victory at home over the Portland Pilots. That win moved BYU to 17-4 overall and 5-1 and in the WCC. Tijon Lucas was an absolute stud, leading the team in scoring with 16. And what was interesting about his performance was that 15 of those 16 came in the first half. He set the tone for BYU to begin the game. A total of four Cougars finished a double-figure scoring, including the birthday boy, Fusene Treore, who ended the night with 13 points and 10 rebounds. It was Fusa's second double-double in a row, and it helped him earn WCC Co-Freshman of the Week, sharing it with Gonzaga's Chet Holmgren. This is now three times so far this season that Fus has earned Conference Freshman of the Week honors, and he certainly deserves it. Now, the Santa Clara Broncos ended their two-game losing streak on Monday night when they beat San Diego in overtime. That win moves the Broncos to 2-2 two and two in the West Coast Conference and 12-7 and seven overall. What's interesting about this team in Santa Clara is they are in the middle of a stretch where they play four games in a week's time. They played Monday, they play tonight, they play Saturday, and then they play on Monday. So this is a stretch of games where the Broncos are going to be playing a lot of games in a very short period of time. This is the first meeting between these two teams this season and the first since February of 2020. The two teams did not play each other last season. In fact, tonight's matchup will also be BYU's first game at the Levy Center since 2018. BYU did win that game, but it's been four years since the Cougars have played in Santa Clara. Now, the guy to pay attention to tonight for the Broncos is 6'6 guard Jalen Williams, who's second in the conference in scoring at 18 points per game. He also shoots 51% from the field and 40% from three. Have to keep him in check tonight. The Broncos also have some impressive forwards in Keyshawn Justice and Josef Frankich, both of whom are seniors and averaging 14 points per game. Speaking of Justice, he ranks 16th nationally in three-point percentage percentage at nearly 45%. Certainly have to pay attention to that. Now someone that Santa Clara is going to have to pay attention to is Seneca Knight, who's coming off back-to-back 14-point performances. I caught up with Seneca after practice this week. Here's our conversation. How's practice been this week? I know you guys are preparing to head back out on the road, but uh, after being home for a week and a couple of wins, it's got to be feeling pretty good right now. Yes, sir. It's feeling great. You know, we're just trying to get better every day, whether it be like an intense practice or like more fundamentals and skills. So yesterday was more fundamental skills and today's more intense. When you're at this point of the season, you guys have been around each other and you've gone through this many games. Everybody's really started to fit into their role. What is the stuff that you work on the most right now? Uh, I say you emphasize, you know, defensive strategies. You know, they change up based on who you're playing that day. And, um, you know, just I say mainly defensive strategies, you know, keep working on your shot, keep so you don't lose the rhythm. But it's more skill work and like more emphasize on detail now at this point. You over the last couple of games have gotten into a really nice offensive rhythm. What's been feeling so good for you in the last couple of games? Uh, I say just having my teammates behind me, just them telling me to keep shooting and just keep playing. Even last game when I missed a couple two and then I had got the charge, it was like, shoot that. So the rest of the game, I just shot it. And then, you know, just trying to go out there and have fun, enjoy it with my teammates. You know, they like family. So we just go out there and just play and, you know, plan on winning. The answer to this question may be obvious, but how have you adjusted or what was the the biggest part adjusting from, from being the guy that everything was run through to having to adjust to everybody else where that wasn't the case? Uh, I would say the biggest adjustment is finding like areas where I, I usually would score at. Uh, me and Coach Pope been working extremely hard at just trying to help get me in the best situations. And like he said the other day, we just still learning each other. So just going out there and just playing and then, you know, my teammates see what I do in practice. So just trying to implement that 
the end of the game with all the confidence. Look, everybody at any point in the season can always do better, but you guys are playing at a high level right now, and I know that everybody still feels like you can get better. That's got to be a pretty positive thing to realize there's probably another level you guys can reach right now. Yes, sir. That does, that does feel great. That's a nice feeling knowing coming in every day to be like, we could take this to another level. Like, we could really up our game. So it's just really nice just to, you know, to look on the bright side and see how things are going now and then trying to plan bigger for that. You actually get to go back near your old stomping grounds this week uh, with the Santa Clara game. For those that have not been to that area, I don't know if they realize how close San Jose State is and Santa Clara is to each other. Uh, you looking forward to kind of heading back to that area? Yes, sir. I am. I'm looking forward to it. I know a couple guys on the team. We got close from just me being in the area. And uh, it's going to be a battle. We know it's going to be a hard game. It's going to be a battle, but we try to come out there and get it up. Who do you know on the roster? Uh, I know Justice and I mainly know Justice. I stay Justice. Yeah. So should we expect any uh, any trash talking back and forth, anything like that? Uh, no, nah, just strictly business. <laughs> I don't get into all of that. I just be chilling, trying to do my job, and then, you know, go on, move on. Okay, so what is the scouting report on the Broncos? One thing they we obviously know that they've shown thus far is they're a very good shooting team. They're a top 30 team percentage-wise. What have you guys discussed in terms of this matchup? Uh, we know they're a really good team. You know, we know we, if they could shoot the ball. Um, also, the fact that they could get out in transition to make plays in transition. So, you know, just trying to read this scout, we got a decent amount of time to prepare for this one. So uh, I think we're we going to be able to execute our plan, though. Defensively, though, you guys have faced a lot of teams that have shown you a lot of different looks. It seems like you guys have already shown the ability from a defensive standpoint to adjust to whatever style is being played. How much has that helped you guys to this point? Uh, I'd say that's the main thing, us just being able to adjust and adapt to different situations. Uh, it shows our versatility. It shows some of uh, the athleticism or just how good of a defensive player some people are on this team. And, you know, I'd say that really helps a lot with going forward to trying to adjust to different game plans. How are things going outside of basketball right now? Uh, they're going really good. Just chilling, just mainly it's basketball. At this time, it's crunch time right now. So when I get time to relax, I just like to watch a movie or something. I'm going YouTube, watch YouTube videos. What's, uh, what's the last movie you saw? Last movie I saw? Man, that's a good question. Are you a go to the theater movie or are you like just like Netflix, TV kind of stuff? All of it. All of it. The last movie I seen in theaters, though, was Spider Man. That Spider Man was tough. All right, take a guess. How many times do you think I've seen Spider Man in the theater? You got kids? I have kids. All right, I've seen it twice. I'm going to assume you've seen it three times? Four. Four. Dang, I was going to guess that. <laughs> it's amazing, right? Like, it's, it's absolutely amazing. No, it's really amazing, just like the title. Yeah, see, yeah, absolutely. Well played there, Seneca. Very nice. Okay, is school going well, though? How's, how is school going? Oh, school going good. You know, my mom stay on me about my academics, so just to keep her off my back, I just handle it. <laughs> what is the hardest part? Because, you know, we hear the term student-athlete. How do you balance that to make sure you give each side of it its focus? I've always been a good student, so it, I don't really have to study too, too much to get good grades. So I say that helps me out a lot. Oh, but you're one of those guys that it just yeah. comes easy to you. It just comes easy to me. So it kind of it kind of helps take off the load of like when I want to come to the gym, I could be able to, you know, spend days in here and not have to worry about making up my schoolwork and everything. Well, it's been fun. You've been on a nice little rhythm and uh, looking like things are really comfortable for you out on the floor. Thanks for taking uh, some time and good luck against the Broncos. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. The great Seneca Knight. Appreciate Seneca taking a few minutes and, and chatting. Chatting about everything. Chatting about basketball, school, Spider-Man. And, and seriously, my addiction to Spider-Man No Way Home is real. It is real, and I have no problem with it whatsoever. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, we will head out to Santa Clara. We'll be joined by Mark Durant. Our courtside conversation with Mark is coming up next as Cougar Pregame Live continues on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with more Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougar Pregame Live is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. It's time for our courtside conversation, and it's been a couple years since I've been able to say let's go to the Levy Center, but that's where we're going. Mark Durant joining me live from the Levy Center. Hi, Mark. How is Santa Clara treating you so far? Beautiful Santa Clara, beautiful day, 70, sunny, palm trees. I mean, I love Utah and all, I'm just saying. This is a nice place. It really is a nice place. <laughs> I, I have been to Santa Clara several times with women's soccer. I've been outside the Levy Center. I have yet to be inside. So 
one of these days I'll make it inside. Uh, did not have the opportunity to do that with soccer. Uh, but this is, uh, this is a place, as we mentioned, BYU has not been in a couple of years, and it's kind of crazy. Didn't face each other last year, and, you know, just with the way the schedules have played, it's, it's kind of crazy that it's been four years since the Cougars have been there. Yeah, it seemed, I didn't know it had been four, but it seemed like a long time since I've been in the building. I really like this building. I think it's just the right size for the conference. Uh, it, it's, it's, you know, it's obviously smaller, but it doesn't have a high school gym feel. you got seats on both ends. I mean, it's, this is a, a good arena. Pacific's a pretty, pretty good arena. Uh, obviously, it's going to change a little bit when you, you know, he goes on the road in the future, and it's going to be tougher to play on the road. Uh, they have some restrictions here, only be about a quarter full, I imagine. Uh, so I don't know that the, the fans will pay a, a, a big deal in this game, but I, I like being here. It's good to be back, and he's had some good success here. Are we at the point now where we just expect Foos to play like this, meaning should we stop being surprised when we see his <laughs> stat line and witness just how impactful he is to this team's success? No, I think, I think we're seeing from him – is kind of the baseline for him because he's so talented. And, and now it'll just be a surprise when he kind of does new and different things. Like, I think he's got a super nice touch. I think he's got range out to the three-point line. He doesn't shoot those right now. I don't think he, you know, I don't know if the coaches are telling him don't shoot it or if he just confidence-wise, you know, he knows that's not his role. But I can certainly see in the next year or two uh, him really extending his range and will be an all-around threat to, to beat you from any position on the floor and will become really unstoppable. Uh, I, I think he'll just get better uh, rebounding. And, I mean, I think what we're seeing, as good as it is, is kind of the floor for him just because I think he's that talented. And he's got such a great body, great basketball mind. He plays with poise. And, you know, I'm looking at he and uh, Atiki Ali Atiki work out right now together. And I think... Atiki watching Foos, I think, has helped Atiki. I think, you know, we saw in that game last week for Atiki a couple of plays that he wouldn't have made earlier in the year. And yeah. but most of it was just patience, uh, getting it, assessing where he's at, making a strong move. And I think you kind of just kind of, when you see Foos play, he does that. And I think it's been good for Atiki to see that. I think both of those guys, man, the sky's the limit for those two. And just to know that they're just scratching the surface basketball-wise is pretty, pretty uh, impressive thing to see. Well, I'm glad you brought up Atiki, and it reminded me uh, in going to practice and, and watching the team. And to kind of illustrate what you were talking about, just the, the raw, just how raw and young he is, you know, there, there are times where he's, you know, the coaching staff will, will let him know he's not in the right spot or, you know, not, don't do this, do this. But there's also times where the coaching staff will look at each other and go, did you just see what he did? And they'll get that look on their face like, oh, my goodness, did you just see what he did? And so it's it's that type of situation when you look at him and you realize, yes, there's a lot, uh, a long ways for him to be able to go and grow. But from just from a, a sheer athletic standpoint and, and what he could turn into, I mean, the, he, he has the tools. Yeah, I mean, you go back to when BYU lost Gavin and Richard, and you thought, well, how can they recover from this? Because Gavin, more importantly than anything, was a real defensive presence around the rim, kind of ran the defense from that five spot. And I thought, I just, I don't, I don't see how BYU can overcome that loss defensively this year. And Richard was a guy that had a big body that could, you could just go bang people and, and you know, be tough and be a physical presence inside. And Atiki's a guy that is now bringing those aspects back to this team. And he's a ter terrific shot blocker. He had three the other night, as is uh, Foos. Uh, and he's a real big, strong guy. Now, he'll... He'll make more mistakes uh, than, say, like a guy like Gavin and, and Richard right now. He's making mistakes. Uh, when he doesn't make mistakes, it's pretty impressive. Uh, his yeah. blocks are really impressive. So you have to kind of take the good, which is the blocks, uh, with the bad, which is some missed assignments and not being able to kind of quarterback the defense back there. There's a drop-off when Patiki's uh, in defensively and not Foose. But he's certain, like everything else, he's really picking it up. And I didn't think BYU could get there with those two this season, uh, especially on the defensive end. And, and I think they're right right back there where they have rim protectors, guys that can 
really help on the pick and roll and un understand when to help and not to help and rotations and backside defense. I mean, th th it's been really impressive to see them play. And it only comes because, you know, they're getting a lot of minutes and, and you can't help but kind of improve and get better when you have those minutes. And it's been really invaluable for those two in particular. All right, let's zero in on the Broncos. This Santa Clara team is getting ready to play game two of four games in eight days. Um, they are a really good shooting team. They are a top 30 shooting team. They're 21st in field goal percentage at 48%. They're 29th in three-point field goal percentage at 37%. Um, the thing that I like about this matchup is clearly that's a strength for them, scoring the basketball, specifically shooting. And BYU, what we've been able to see game in and game out, even if the offense struggles a little bit or the shot isn't falling, the defense has traveled. I think this is going to be a really good matchup of efficient shooting and a team in BYU that's proven to be a very good defensive team. Now, when you look at the conference, you kind of have that top four of San Francisco, BYU, St. Mary's, Gonzaga. I think Santa Clara is right, right near there, the top of the next tier to me. I think San Diego was with them, and they had that great overtime win here against San Diego the other night. And uh, and so they, I think they've kind of asserted themselves as, as that, that next team out after those four. And, and the way they do it is by really taking care of the basketball. They're the best team as far as turnovers in the conference. Uh, they shoot the heck out of the ball, shoot really good from three uh, and, and from two. And so they're a very efficient club that is going to score points, uh, and so that you know that that makes it tough. I mean, you gotta you gotta try to slow that offensive down, uh, offense down a little bit. And uh, BYU's got a good rebounding advantage, uh, and try to do some of the things that they do. I mean, BYU's the best three-point defense in the conference, so you got the best three-point shooting team in the conference and the best defensive three-point shooting team. So it may be whoever kind of wins that battle is in in really good shape in this game, but. They, they got really good players. Jalen Williams is terrific. Keyshawn yep. Justice is very good. They got four guys averaging, or maybe five guys averaging double figures in conference play. Uh, Vrankic seems like he's another of those guys that's been here a long time. And, uh, and he's he's really good. And they can all shoot the three, which always poses problems for BYU. You know, getting out, like, are we talking about a tiki? Getting, being able to get out and cover that three-point shot's going to be difficult for him. They may go smaller lineup at times, but... Yeah, this is a real threat. I mean, coming uh, to this building against a team that has had some really good wins and just had an overtime win, and they're feeling pretty good about themselves. Yep. And uh, so this is a trap. I mean, this is you better be ready to go. And this, this is certainly a team that at least has the offensive ability to, to really give BYU all they can handle. We talk about turnovers a lot, and that's something that uh, in some games this season has plagued BYU. And while, while they certainly, you know, need to – keep hold of the ball and, and not turn it over. Um, I, I think the, the discussion tonight in terms of the turnovers may be trying to force more turnovers for Santa Clara. If you look at all the teams in the West Coast Conference, the Broncos turn the ball over the least. So maybe forcing some turnovers tonight could go a long way for the BYU defense. Yeah, that, that'll be a storyline. I mean, BYU's been a little bit turnover prone. And, and like we said, Santa Clara's really good at taking care of the basketball. So, I mean, Santa Clara's going to need multiple opportunities whether that comes through turning BYU over and limiting their turnovers uh, that, that's a big obviously a big thing BYU is going to try and balance that with their rebounding advantage and uh, you know all those things kind of factor in it's, it's always a balance and you you've got to do really good at what you do well and then try and limit what other teams are, are really good at so BYU's got to you know, defend the three not give up a lot of offensive rebounds not give uh, Santa Clara multiple opportunities uh, you know, keep Rankin's off the boards, good rebounder. Uh, Keyshawn Justice is a double-double guy. I mean, they've got guys good boards. So you got to keep them off the boards, limit your turnovers, and, and just play efficient basketball. I think BYU does that. They're going to be in good shape in this game, but easier said than done. All right, last thing. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, is he coming back? You want him Man, back. Man, I'm just so I'm just so disgusted. I can't even think about it. I'm just uh, that game just gutted me. I mean, I I haven't had a game hurt me like that in a long time. The fact that it's the 49ers for once it kills me. And to you're have like to drive a mile from their stadium right oh, now too, a, by the way. This monstrosity that I have to drive by <laughs> back and forth to get to this. Gym. I just uh, so that made it even worse. And then to just kind of lay an egg like that. I mean, it's, I'm just sick about it. I, listen, no one loves Aaron Rodgers more than me, but. Uh, man, it's it's hard to keep going out of the playoffs when you you know have a good team and you just can't seem to get it done. So I, 
Uh, I don't want to see him go, but, uh, you know, at this point, it's, it's not going to break my heart because Jordan Love can lose in the first round of the playoffs just as good as Aaron Rodgers can. <laughs> Mark, I'll always love the insight. Good luck you, you though, are, my friend. Good thank luck you. Thank you. you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. We'll uh, we'll accept any and all fans that want to jump on the bandwagon. Please uh, please join us in rooting on the Chiefs this it's weekend. It's the red, the though, Bengals. man. It's the red. I love I love them, but it's just something in me. Can't, I can't cheer for a red team. Okay. I can understand that. I can fully understand it. Mark, great stuff as always. Thank you so much. We'll hear you with Greg coming up in a few minutes. All right, my brother. See you. There he is, the great Mark Durant. Stop by your local Big O Tires for no credit needed financing and the lowest price on every tire every day. Big O Tires, the team you trust. We'll take a break. One final segment. When we come back, we'll update you on both BYU women's basketball and BYU men's volleyball, both going on as we speak right here on campus. We'll update both of those games when we return on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's get you back to Cougar Pregame Live with your host, Jason Shepard. Cougar Pregame Live is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. The Cougars are in Northern California taking on the Santa Clara Broncos. First time they've played at Santa Clara since 2018. And fans, remember when the Cougars win, you win with Papa John's Pizza. With the BYU win tonight, pizza will be 50% off at PapaJohns.com tomorrow using the online promo code BYU50. That's BYU50. This offer is good at any Utah location. Let's check in right next door to uh, BYU Broadcasting over at the Marriott Center. It is BYU Women's Basketball also taking on Santa Clara tonight. And hey, maybe we, maybe we'll have two blowouts tonight because right now the women are absolutely destroying the Broncos at the Marriott Center. They have a 33-point lead and the fourth quarter just started. It is 66-33 BYU with the lead over Santa Clara. Now at the Smith Fieldhouse, they are in set three Three, BYU hosting Mount Olive. Mount Olive took set one, 26 to 24. BYU even things up by taking set number two, 25 to 19. And in set number three, the Cougars with the two-point advantage with at 11 to nine. We'll update that throughout the evening. Uh, a couple of finals from uh, other teams locally. Two finals, in fact. Weber State winning at Northern Colorado, 85 to 76. And Utah Valley getting the win on the road at Chicago State, 101 to 87. We'll get you top 25 scores and West Coast Conference scores coming up at halftime. But coming up next, we'll get you out to the Levy Center for the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show with Greg Rubel. You're listening to BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time to get the inside scoop on today's game. This is the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show, brought to you by Zions Bank. For a financial slam dunk, Zions Bank is for you. Also brought to you by Big O Tires. Your local Big O Tires has financing available. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Now let's head back to the Built Bar courtside seats and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening, Cougar basketball fans, and welcome courtside inside the Levy Center in Santa Clara, California, for BYU's first trip here in more than four years. And what may be the second-to-last visit for the foreseeable future, it's the best Santa Clara team that Herb Sendak has put together. It's a quad two game for BYU as the Cougs look to bolster their postseason resume with another solid road W. I am Greg Rubel. I'll have your play-by-play -play call tonight, joined by my 25-season broadcast partner, the former Cougar cager Mark Durant and uh, Mark in BYU's WCC history. The Cougs have dominated Santa Clara and have played very well here on the Broncos home hardwoods. BYU 17-1 against Santa Clara since joining the WCC. That includes a 6-1 record here in the Levy Center. But BYU will have to beat its best to maintain that mastery. This Santa Clara squad has the makings of, of a top-tier team in this conference. Uh, certainly a top-tier offensive team. They shoot the uh, three ball really well. Uh, they take care of the basketball. So they've got a lot of offensive production that BYU is going to have to deal with. And You know, the, the scary thing is, Greg, you know, BYU's just got it out in front of them. If they just take care of business, they're going to be right where they want to be when all this is over. And, these are the kind of games that scare you because as good as Santa Clara is, 
you know, they're not talked about at the top of the conference, but they're, they're very, very good, and it's going to be a real battle to, to get a win here tonight, and an important win for BYU going forward because they got some tough games uh, up ahead, and, and you just have to take care of business. If you want to meet those goals you said at the beginning of the year, it's these types of games that are so critical. He is Mark Durant. Mark Pope is coming up next as the Zions Bank Cougar pregame coaches show continues. Live from Santa Clara, California, on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're tuned to the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show. For more with head coach Mark Pope, let's rejoin your host, Greg Rubel. We are broadcasting live from courtside at the Levy Center on the campus of Santa Clara University. This 4,000-seat venue limited to 25% capacity and uh, relatively few BYU fans. Uh, historically, BYU's not only played well here, but drawn well here. And thanks to Santa Clara's COVID protocols, we'll not have uh, the same kind of game atmosphere here tonight. Time now for our pregame interview with BYU head coach Mark Pope, presented by Zions Bank for a financial slam dunk. Zions Bank is for you. And tonight the coach talks about uh, taking on a Santa Clara team that in contrast to some previous WCC opponents in the recent weeks... Santa Clara really wants to get up and down and turn tonight's game into a high-scoring pull-and-fire affair. Yeah, they're a really good team. I mean, they're also a terrific defensive team. They don't let you score from the three-point line, and they really, really protect the rim. You know, for them, the percentage of points earned from long twos is they force you to be really good there. Um, so they, 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 this is a really good team. It's a team that, when they were healthy early in the season, beat Stanford and beat uh, TCU which is, a, you know, right now in the field. And um, they're, they're, they beat Nevada. I think they're good, and they're really, really dangerous. Uh, so we got to work it out for us. The phrase now is is getting old or getting older, and, and Santa Clara is one of those teams with a really strong trio in Justice, Frankich, and Williams, of course. And Williams is only a junior, but he's been around a while. And Pipes is a senior with uh, f- four years of experience at Green Bay. Yeah, and those three guys are just a proven commodity every single night. Every single night, Frankich is a problem. Every single night, Williams is, you know, Williams is one of those guys that you could start talking about as a, a player of the league, you know, player of the year in the league. And, and uh, Justice is such a lethal, lethal scorer. He's one of those guys that when he gets it going, He's so big at six, 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 seven, but is a pure shooter playing the two, three. Um, he's a real problem. And then, and then you know the other two starters they have. Pipes is a, you know, is career wise is a big time scorer. He's a guy that uh, can just run off points in in quick stretches. And then Braun is a really, really mobile, really athletic, really vertical. Uh, five men that sprints the floor and is shooting, you know, a great percentage from the three-point line. Uh, so they cause problems in all kind of different ways. But the three guys you have to start with are those three vets. They turn you over to score uh, in the overtime game against San Diego. I think they outscored the Toreros by 12 in points off of turnovers. Transition defense has to be huge tonight. Taking care of the ball first. Of all. Yeah, and then that's where transition defense starts. Right, is you have to get shots. You got to get shots. It's super important. It's you know, you have to guard and transition sometimes when you turn the ball over, but you need to limit the number of times you have to do that because it's just so difficult and you're at such a deficit. And, you know, it's possessions like that where you're asking guys to make um, just huge individual efforts, and we have guys that can do that, but we need to protect this ball. And then the thing that makes them tricky is it's not, you know, uh, we, you know, uh, some of the games we played recently has been really a, f- a focus on a wall and a bottom and, and making sure that we have loaded the ball really heavily with this team. You always have Justice roaming around in, into this three-point line. You got Williams running this three-point line, and you got these trail bigs who both are capable of hitting trail threes in transition. So it, it forces you to guard a much bigger area in transition all the while trying to communicate and take care of the wall and bottom responsibilities you have. So uh, that's why they're good. That's why they're really good. First road opportunity for you since the San Francisco game. That was a big win. Another great road chance for your guys tonight. Yeah, it's it's crazy. That seems like two months ago, and it was just a week ago. Uh, or, you know, the, 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 you know, we were just home for two games. But you know, life is hard on the road. It just is, especially in a good league. And it's a good win if you get it. Yeah, if you, if you if we can go grab this win, it'll be a huge win for us. And 
you know, the one thing we know about our team is is they've proven it through 21 games. So they come every single night and they fight and compete. And so that gives us a lot of comfort. And, and then we, we just need to come play well. Coach Pope, good luck in this one. We'll talk to you post game. Thanks, Greg. All right, that's Mark Pope. And time now for tonight's keys to the game. Brought to you by Ford. Built Ford Proud. Mark Durant gives us his keys to tonight's contest. Well, Santa Clara, one of the better shoot three-point shooting teams in the conference, and they shoot around 38%. BYU is the best defensive three-point team at around 29%. I think the closer either team gets to that number for them, they'll probably be the winner of this basketball game. That's Mark Durant and keys to the game as we head to break. We remind you that Smith's has all your fresh game day grilling favorites. When you shop today, you can get free pickup on orders of $35 or more. Just order from the app or at Kroger.com and make your game day great. Smith's fresh for everyone. The BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show coming up next, live from Santa Clara on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's almost time to hit the hardwood. This is the Cougar Tip-Off Show, brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Also brought to you by the BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. Also by Siegfried and Jensen. Siegfried and Jensen has been helping Utah families for over 30 years. Now let's head live to the Built Bar courtside seats and join Mark Durant alongside the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening once again, Cougar Nation. Welcome back inside the Levy Center in Santa Clara, California for a Thursday night WCC showdown tonight. The 17-4 BYU Cougars, 5-1 in league, visiting the 12-7 Santa Clara Broncos, 2-2 two two in the WCC with its only losses to Gonzaga and St. Mary's Broncos tonight to look for their best win of the season for BYU. A win at Santa Clara would end up in quad two. And coming in two tonight, there are only a handful of teams with more quad one and quad two wins then BYU which has eight including five quad two victories this is the BYU store Cougar tip-off show brought to you by the BYU store official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere Greg Grubel Mark Durant with you from courtside Jason Shepard is our studio host our control board operators are Corbin Radford and Logan Gardner Terry South our coordinating producer our BYU radio engineers Sean Fay and Barry Squires in studio tonight. Uh, Bryce Noakes is our broadcast intern. Tyson Jex is BYU Basketball's media relations director helping us out here courtside. You are listening live on the new skin BYU Sports Network. Well, Mark, as well as BYU's played here historically, and despite the fact that uh, BYU has won 17 of 18 meetings with Santa Clara in the WCC, this Bronco team is senior heavy. Jalen Williams, although only a junior, is the highest scoring player in the WCC. Herb Sendek is a 500 win coach. A win here tonight would I think really hold up well in the postseason portfolio. Yeah, you don't uh, accidentally win 500 games in college basketball to have that kind of longevity and that those kind of numbers means you're a really good coach. And So yeah, that always worries me because I know it's a co- this is a team that will have a plan and be ready to go to play BYU uh, and will have a good plan. And so that, that scares you a little bit. That, that, those players you mentioned, Williams is very good and Justice and Brankich, I mean, that's kind of their top three, but they got five guys averaging double figures in conference play. This is a really, really talented team. Started the season 5-0, and double-digit victories over Stanford, Nevada, TCU. It's a team that can play. It's a team that can score. This will be a really good win, and those of the people that know college basketball will understand that if BYU can come out of here with a W. We go to a break by telling you that mouth-watering Hawaiian-style food is minutes away from the Marriott Center. Fresh off the grill chicken, teriyaki steak, and sizzling shrimp. Coconut Island Grill gives that all to you. Coconut Island Grill with the island flavors your mouth's been waiting for. Text the word ALOHA to 61090 for a 15% discount off your next visit. The word ALOHA to 61090. Coming up after this break, we'll hear from Santa Clara assistant coach Jason Ludwig as the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off show continues live from Santa Clara, California on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Cougar Tip-Off show. Let's head back live courtside and join Greg Rubel. You are tuned to the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show live from the Levy Center here in Santa Clara, California. BYU playing for a fourth straight WCC win 
and its first ever 6-1 start in WCC play. Santa Clara tonight hosting BYU for the first time since the 2017-18 season, a function of the league's uh, unbalanced scheduling protocol. BYU last played the Broncos in Provo two years ago, and many of the players the Cougars saw that night are back tonight, led by the trio of Jalen Williams, Keyshawn Justice, and Josip Vrankic. They and guard P.J. Pipes, all averaging double-figure scoring. Williams leading the WCC in points per game in conference play a short time ago. I sat down with Santa Clara assistant coach Jason Ludwig to preview the second game in a busy stretch of four games in eight days for the Broncos, who have the deepest team they've seen here in years. Yeah, there's no question about it. Um, You know, we we were very excited about uh, this team that we were able to put together. It's no question one of the best teams that we've had since we've been here at Santa Clara and, and frankly, a long time here, and it's, it's, uh, it's very exciting. There are different ways to get older. Some you can start with freshmen and, and grow them, and sometimes you go out and get a couple guys who played a few games. That's what you've done too. Yeah, I think uh, recruiting has completely changed, and now uh, with, with the transfer portal and guys not having to sit out, it opens up a whole new opportunity for recruiting. So I think what we've been – what not just us, but a lot of coaches have been able to do is, you know, there, there's different routes now. You still want to be able to recruit high school guys and try to develop guys and have guys in your program. And then there's opportunities now for guys to come in and have an instant impact. So it's, it's uh, you know, it's a great opportunity. What have PJ and Parker brought to your team in particular? You know, they're great. Ki- First and foremost, they're just great people, great kids, great character. Um, that's something that's really important in our program. We want to make sure that we bring in guys that um, not only are great basketball players, but just have a, a great attitude, bring great effort every day, are great teammates and just great people you want to be around. Um, so I think that that first and foremost has been a, a great asset to us is they brought that attitude in into the program. Uh, but they're older, they're experienced, uh, they, they, they play. PJ has had a tremendous experience. So to be able to, to add pieces like that to our already experienced team is, has been valuable. How do you feel about your 2-2 two and two start in league, knowing you've got BYU tonight, USF on the weekend still, so you're taking on some very good league teams very early? Yeah, shoot, this league this year, I, you know, I've been a part of the WCC for, for quite some time, and i got to say this is as deep and is as good as the league has ever been that I, I can remember. And, uh, you know, everybody's doing a great job. The, the coaching staffs are doing great. The talent is as good as it's ever been. Um, so there's no nights off. Every night you're going to be tested. Every night uh, there, there's a chance to, w- to win and a chance to lose. Uh, there's no gimmies. Uh, so, yeah, we have a great uh, a test ahead of us, and we're excited for the opportunity. Yeah, been a couple of years. What are your thoughts on the Cougs? Oh, man, they're always good. They're always good. This year, uh, li- like always, they're, they're a tremendous team. They ha- there's great depth. Li- uh, like us, you guys have had some great transfers uh, to increase your guys' depth. Uh, Barcelo is a heck of a player. I mean, that guy, he's... He's making shots all over the floor uh, with very little time and space. So he's someone that we're really going to have to key in on and, and is going to be, a, a, you know, it's going to be a tough guard, but we're up for the challenge. Can you see this one being an up and down game? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I haven't really looked at the statistics, but I know that we, you know, we put up quite a few points and you guys do as well. So I can't imagine there's, there's going to be a lot of transition buckets in this game. Even though it won't be a full house for obvious reasons, uh, it's always a good vibe when these two teams get together here. Yeah, no, no question. I, we hope that, uh, you know, the fans that do show up are going to bring a great uh, environment and, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, and it's definitely going to be a, a heck of a game because there's, I think, both teams are very good and it's going to be a battle. Well, we're not going to see you back at the Marriott Center this year. Hopefully it happens next year. Thank you for the pregame preview tonight. I appreciate your time and good luck the rest of the way. Anytime. Thanks for having me. All right, that is Santa Clara assistant coach Jason Ludwig. We'll have more of the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off show coming up right after this. We are live at the Levy Center on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Back after this. Welcome back to the Cougar Tip-Off show. Let's rejoin Craig Rubel. BYU and Santa Clara coming up here at the Levy Center, capping off a full slate of games in the West Coast Conference. A couple games are at halftime. A team BYU is going to face on Saturday. Pacific is playing at Portland tonight, leading at the break 25-24. The other game at half is the bigger game this night, and that's St. Mary's at San Francisco. The Dons in the first half had a lead of 23. They lead by 17 at halftime, 41-24, to having just tipped off Pepperdine and San Diego at San Diego, and the Toreros lead Pepperdine 11-6. Later on tonight, tipping at the same time as BYU and Santa Clara, LMU and Gonzaga. Gonzaga leads the WCC 4-0. BYU solo second at 5-1. St. Mary's 3-1, USF 3-2. And, and a bunch of teams battling for that fifth spot, dragging up the rear. Pacific and Pepperdine both winless 
in league right now. Mark, uh, four bids are still a possibility for this league, but BYU, San Francisco, St. Mary's always on upset alert. Uh, there can be almost no slip-ups for teams hoping to play in the NCAA tournament. I mean, you look at today, BYU looks really good. I mean, they're in all the brackets, and they're looking at a 7 to 8, 9 seed, and Hey man, we're in. We're good. But I tell you, it changes really quickly, and it doesn't change faster than when you lose to teams that you should not lose to. If you lose a couple, man, you can be on the outside so quickly. So BYU again. So you got to take care of business. Get it done tonight. Come out, play with a lot of fire. Use their experience, their guards, those kind of things. Match the offensive output for Santa Clara. Get a win. It's very, very important game tonight. BYU men's basketball is dunking on cancer. Through generous donations, each BYU dunk during BYWCC play will raise money for BYU Simmons Center for Cancer Research. For more information on the Cougs' fight against cancer, go to sccr at chem.byu.edu. Some final words before tip-off. Coming your way next, this is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. The Cougar Tip-Off Show rolls on. Let's head back live courtside. BYU and Santa Clara coming up here at Santa Clara, California. Seneca Knight is, uh, as Jason noted in his pregame interview with Seneca, back in his old stomping grounds. Seneca, the former San Jose State Spartan, has experience against Santa Clara. Says he's uh, got a relationship with Keyshawn Justice who plays for Santa Clara, of course. Uh, Seneca Knight starting to score more consistently lately. And, Mark, that's, a, 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 that's such a welcome occurrence for BYU as he kind of rounds into shape as an offensive weapon. Yeah, I mean, clearly he's a scorer. He led the, his conference in scoring coming here, so we're all kind of waiting on him. He's played pr- pretty well, but I think now we're starting to see a real confident, not turning the ball over as much, shooting better from three-point line. He has been terrific, and he doesn't have to be any better, but if he can be what he's been, that will really, really help BYU offensively. And in a different way, Atiki Ali Atiki is doing more. Yeah, he's he's starting, I think, watching Foose. He's kind of seeing how to play, how to block shots, how to be patient when he gets it, don't force things, not turn it over. Foose, uh, Atiki and Foose have been terrific. Coming up next, tip-off of BYU and Santa Clara. This has been the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.